Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you here with God? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, holy shola. If there's a message, they need to get this here. Hallelujah. Can somebody here that you know you want to receive from God open to the book of Romans while we're standing? Romans chapter 8, verse 28. We are going to read it together if you have your Bible. Romans chapter 8. Please. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And let our minds be with God. I pray that God that has ascended, has ascended for you and myself in the name of Jesus. Because if you stay with God, God will stay with you. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Are we there? Yeah, let us read together. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. If that, if you are that person, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, the mic, you can get mic from Tokumbo and also give it to you. Okay. Let us have a seat before God. God will continue to be with us in the name of Jesus. Now, please, this word that is going to come out today, I want you to not only sit, but I want you to pay attention because this word is going to do you good and i pray that god almighty as we listen will perfect his will in all our lives in the name of jesus have you ever felt that god has let you down before have you ever felt that god is slow maybe you need something fast and you expect god to do it and you are waiting and then you felt God is not actually working the way that is supposed to work for you. Have you ever felt that God is on the side of your enemy? Why is this happening? I want to tell you, if you have ever felt like that, this message is for you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Have you ever felt that you are expecting something and you felt God is taking too much of time? And you know, I've been praying, I need this now. You, you are like a woman, you need it now. And God is saying, hold on, but you felt, because God is not doing it now, that means, ah, uh -uh, your serving God is not worthy. This message is for you. But Romans 8, 28, that we read said that, we know that in all things all things work for the goods of those that love god who are called in accordance to his purpose if you are called in accordance to god's purpose shout hallelujah can you look at someone that said god is my only source can you look at another person and say god is my only source and look at the third person and said any other thing is a resource I want us to hold to that all through this message. And I pray that God will remain our source in the name of Jesus. So the, today we are going to do it different. The theme for the word today is God's providence. God's providence. God the ever provider. God's providence. And we are going to start actually from the second reading. And we are going to go to the first. You know, that is different from what we usually do. Jesus, after he had baptized many, he baptized so much that he did more than John the Baptist did. And then learned that the Pharisees are after him. So he had to flee Judea and was going to Galilee. But while he was going to Galilee, he stopped by at Samaria. And then when he stopped by a Samaria, he met a Samaritan woman. We are very, we are used to this word. John chapter 4, just hold it down until I say read. John chapter 4, the lesson for today. 
He met a Samaritan woman by the well. Jesus was there, and then the woman came to get water. And then God, in his infinite mercy, in the body, was able to put smile in the face of that woman. I want to tell you today that if you have ever felt sorrow, sadness over a thing or the other, because of the grace of today, God is handing you joy in the name of Jesus. Oh, it seems some people don't need that prayer. Just direct your hands to me and say, God will give me joy in the name of Jesus. Uh, you see, I thought everyone loves me. But I figured out that it is me, myself, I before we. May God bless us in the name of Jesus. All this happened while the disciples went to get food. The disciples thought, okay, master is tired. Let's go get some food to eat. And while they were gone, there was a meeting between Christ and this woman at the well. But the lesson of today, just like I like to do, we'll just deal with what they've given to us. And we will see how that touches our life. And I pray that our life will be touched in the name of Jesus. Can we open the gate for that person that is coming? I am glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. I am glad. I am glad. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my God. I see there are many of us that are bigger than God. We're singing and we're sitting down. May God help us in the name of Jesus. In Salem, once they start singing, we'll stand up. I know we are very strong. I pray that God will continue to strengthen us in the name of Jesus. So, John chapter 4. I want somebody to read that lesson, 34 to 38. Somebody with a mic, read that lesson so that people at home can hear. Jesus my said unto them, Yes. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me uh -huh. and to finish his work. Yes. Say ye not. There are yet four months, uh -huh. and then come my harvest. Uh -huh. Behold, yes. I say unto you, yes. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Can you look at someone and say, lift up your eyes? Uh huh. And look, look. The field, for there are white already to harvest. Every your harvest is ready. Can you say, my harvest is ready? My harvest is ready. Uh huh. And he that reapeth, yes, receiveth wages. Uh huh and gathered fruit unto life eternal yes that both he that soweth both the sower and that reapeth and the reaper may rejoice together may rejoice together uh -huh. and herein is that saying true yes one soweth one soweth and another reapeth another that reapeth i send you to reap yes. that where ye bestowed no labor other men labor. Hold, hold on i sent you to go and reap where other men has labored. I want you to keep those words. May God grant us great harvest in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh -huh. I send you to reap that where ye bestow no labor. Yes. Other men labor. Yes. And ye are entered into their labors. Can somebody say amen? amen. Have your seat. May God bless you in the name of Jesus when they came back to christ then i said ah master here is food and christ told them he said my food is to do the will of him that has sent me not only to do the will but to finish his work and what is that will of god that will of god is written in that verse 35 to hasten the harvest can you look at someone and say pay attention the reason why I'm telling you to pay attention is, you see, during ministration, there are hosts of angels perfecting the will of God in people. It is mightier than when we pray. I pray that God will minister to us in the name of Jesus. So, verse 35, Christ has come to esteem the harvest. Whether it is a spiritual harvest, whether it is the physical harvest, it is to make sure that whatever that you want to harvest comes to you.
I need to tell you this. You might look as if, what is this man saying? I've been expecting this and it's yet to come. What did Christ say then? He said, look, for the harvest is what? Ripe. I tell somebody here today, if you've been asking from January and this is July, whatever that you're asking for in this month of July, God will give it to you in the name of Jesus. And let me tell you, now to bust their bubbles, like the Americans will say, he told them, he said, I want you to go and reap where others have labored. See, some people will take that literally. But what was he saying? Do m Most of us, we sing, Abraham, blessings is my Hallelujah. Don't we have mic now? Hallelujah. You can sit down. I am, I am blessed in the evening. Abraham, blessings are mine. Okay, good for you. I mean, I am blessed in the morning, in the noon, and the evening. If you like, miss afternoon. Abraham, blessings are mine. Now, the question is Who among us is Abraham? Please, can you open the gate? Open the gate for him. Let him come in. Let the man of God come in. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Who amidst us is Father Abraham. If you are Father Abraham, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Eh, are you Father Abraham? That means you are not listening. None of us is Father Abraham. But we are enjoying the Abrahamic covenant. Even till today. Who labored? Abraham. Who is sleeping? me i like that we like ourselves so much in this church personally god bless us in the name of jesus <laughs> and when it comes to salvation i'm just trying to give us understanding when it comes to salvation jesus christ worked out salvation for us how many of us was nailed to the cross Eh? You receive one, one nail in one hand. Let me see your hands up. You were beaten. You, were, you had that crown on your head. Even witness that saw it. You were there when they were doing it all. And you were crying. None of us. But today we are enjoying the Mosaic Covenant. Even till today. I have sent others to labor. You are to do what? Read. I pray that in this month, that which people have thought will never become yours, that you have asked that God will do for you, which is called good. May God make it happen in the name of Jesus. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. I know many are saying, ah, okay, this one is trying to make me feel good. And what about the, these things that I'm expecting? We will get to that which you are expecting. Can you look at somebody and say, we will get to that? Do not worry. Hallelujah. This God of providence is the God that is God's gracious oversight over the universe. And you know God's providence can be proved in four features. Four attributes. One is his sovereignty. God is in control. It doesn't matter how you feel. God is in control. Whether you are at the bottom of the sea or you are high up in the air, who is in control? God. There is nothing that is done on heart that God does not know about. Uh, I, I can't believe God is looking at me. The way I'm suffering, he knows about it. I tell you today, many of the things that we cry about, if we truly know for the purpose to which God is driving us around that area, many of us will come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and we'll be rolling to the right, to the left. But because we do not know, may God help us in the name of Jesus. Another thing is predestination. Please, if you leave today, I'm going to charge you a thousand dollars. It's a promise. A thousand dollars if you leave. It's a promise. So come and sit down. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Listen to the word of God. You have just delivered the word of God. Listen to the word of God. May God help us in the name of Jesus. 
Please, everybody, write it down, Sister Victoria 1000, if she leaves. Predestination. Which means God is in charge of how things turn out. So people talk about coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence. I don't, I don't believe that. If God, if it is not written, it will not happen. God is in charge of what happens, when it happens, how it happens, why it is happening. In fact, he knows what will happen after it has happened. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Another thing which will make you know the problems of God is the wisdom. God makes no mistake. Whether somebody's child died now, God has never made mistake. Whether somebody is dead at this moment, whether somebody is risen, God does not make everything is for his purpose. All things are created for his purpose. May the purpose of God be fulfilled in our life in the name of Jesus. And the last thing is goodness. God has our best interests in heart. And I don't even know. I'm supposed to have day, I'm supposed to have graduated. I want just one cause. Mm, God knows why. And some of these things that we complain about God concerning God, we when you don't read. And you don't want God to do miracle. And I've had people here tell us that will come and say, they said there is a work in Sele. Do it. And I say, Do you read? Say I'm not reading. I said, You're lying. No. It's not going to work. I can give you the honor from the innermost part of the altar that I've never touched in my life. Give it to you. You lick it from now till Jesus will come. If you don't read, you are going to feel like never before. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Get this. We are not supposed to understand God's ways. In 5 to 6. The ways of God are mysterious to accomplish His works. His ways no man Okay, I thought that it was his ways. The shepherd can determine. Is that what was written there? His ways, holy shola can determine. Is that what was written there? His ways, mommy ajao can determine. Mommy, is that what was written there? No. No one can determine it. It's unsearchable. I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. But do you know the only thing that God is asking from us? In 544. Let's hold the pillar of the Lord Jesus. Zayati, the world that would be no God of Aquaya. Have faith in him. Yes, have faith in his love. Eh? Have faith in him. Yes. Lift up order, have faith. Then, of his mercy, just have faith, faith in the Lord Jesus. If you don't have faith, you cannot taste of his mercy. May God bless us with his faith in the name of Jesus. I want to tell you this God does everything for his kingdom and his glory. If you are good in making, um, using the mud, and you begin to make something, let's say you want to make three plates, and you make the first one, and then you make the second one, and you made it all, and the first one felt you did not make him right, and fell from the chair to the ground. You know you can just use your leg to push it away and not use it to make anything anymore. That is how we are in God's hand. God has molded you for his purpose. Whether you have a big head or a small head, whether you are very light in complexion like myself, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Or you are very, very dark like they show it in TV, the Satan. I don't know why they show Satan so dark. Satan is never that dark. I've never seen Satan. Be Satan are very, very nice looking people. Beautiful. Beautiful people. Was made with fire, shining. And then somebody will show it as, as black as somebody. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God does not violate 
is free will or our own free will but it will use your free will to fulfill its purpose which means if you are a wicked person god will use your wickedness to fulfill righteousness in the life of another if you are somebody that wants to kill god will use your wickedness god does not change his will and some people will say god is the author of sin god is never the author of sin yet god will use evil to fulfill his purpose hallelujah, hallelujah. if we look at celestial church of christ yeah, apart from we that are born into this church how many deliberately joined Sele? I don't think there is one. Maybe, maybe 05 percent of the whole population of the Church of Christ. Everyone came into the church because there was an issue, and an issue that they needed God to fix. May God fix our issues in the name of Jesus. Amen. Some people are arguing within them now. Ah, it's about my troubles. What about this that I want? What about that? You are you telling me that God is not going to no, know God will, but at this time. So the question that we need to ask ourselves first is why does God allow lack? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Why does God allow lack? Number one, if you feel like you need to write it down, God allows lack because of the sin of idolatry. Deuteronomy 11, somebody to open Deuteronomy 11, 16 to 17. I know you want to read, my boy, you don't have a mic. Please, can you get her a mic so that she can read? Mommy here. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 16 and 17. Be careful. Yes. Or you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods. Be careful or you will be enticed and then you start to worship another god and you turn away from God. Uh huh. And bow down to them. And then bow down to them. Then the Lord's anger will burn against you. Once you have another god that is different from God, it is written that God's anger will begin to what? Burn. Have you ever seen a wife that see her husband messing up messing around with other women and they are happy if that happens then they are not meant to be together in cutting she won't somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. uh-huh and it will shut the heavens so that it will not rain and the ground will yield no produce god, god bless you see once you have a replacement for from for god want to say this is the person that i put more or maybe a person a pastor or a prophet someone that you are placed in the position of god then god will shut heaven that is why many keep running from pillar to post from prophet to prophet and they are not getting results because they have made the prophet they have made that pastor they have made that shepherd they have made them god and so god will shut heaven and will look at our foolishness sin of adultery is one of the things that allows lack Number two is sin of abandonment. Can somebody say abandonment? abandonment? Which comes from so many, it comes from idolatry too. When you abandon God, when you move away from your provider, eh? you are my child, you stay in my house, you eat my food, I clothe you, I feed you. And then you say, Daddy, I cannot listen to you, and you move out. You're on your own. Now, when you move out and you begin to cry in anguish, how am I supposed to run to you? May God help us in the name of Jesus. Number three is sometimes God tries us. He did that to the Israelites. Deuteronomy chapter 28, uh, chapter 8, not 28, verse 1 to 3. He tried them just to know if their heart is with him. Be careful. Yes. To follow every command. Yes. I am giving you today uh -huh. so that you may live yes. and increase. Yes. And you may enter and possess yes. the land the Lord promised on oath yes. to your ancestors. Uh -huh. 
Remember. Remember. How the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness. How God led you all the way in the wilderness. Forty years to humble and test you. To humble and to test you. In order to know. Let us just leave it that way. Some of the things that we are going through is because God wants to humble us and test us. Some of us, we've lived a life that there's nobody. We've left that life. Ah, it is anything we say is final. And then God brings you down so that you know that you are nothing. So that whatever, whatever that you're saying is not final. You have a husband that is doing everything. You walk over, walk over, walk over. Him. God will make the husband leave. Give you somebody that will discipline you. And now you are saying God is not. Ah! Somebody shout hallelujah. You know how many things we complain about? That is our troubles. God has placed you. Some people, God has placed them at the end of affairs. They were everything. And they did not use it right. And God looked at them. Okay, you think it is your. Let me, let me have you taste what others are tasting. Lack humbles man. Lack it me reality only to 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 need tell about twenty only. When when you need when anyone needs something, you see how calm they are. As if people come to church when they need something, you say kneel down, kneel down, pow, they pow. Even if you tell them by your head a night ninety nine times, you say boom 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 before you know it's done. Now let their let the breeze of goodness flow into their life. Let them become big. If they are not careful, they will be the one to say, Pastor, I don't even like the way you're doing it. You know, that you cannot be, uh, uh, it's, it's not acceptable. We have to find a way to change it. May that not become you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Paul gave us the answer of why God humbles us. Lack will humble any man. You still need money to pay rent. You need money to do this. You want to become this. You have a court case. You, you are in somebody's in the hospital. Everything. You, the least that you would do is to humble yourself and go to God. If no man is going to help you. That is the only time we pray. Do you know that's the only time we pray? When everything is jolly. We have millions. We have thousands. We have everything. We have houses. Everything is going smooth. Even when they call us to come and worship. We will say, rather say, let me send money. Like that money. It's a representation, representation of you in the church. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Paul gave the answer. Second Corinthians 1. 8 to 9. Paul gave us an answer there. Can you look at somebody and say, don't sleep. Don't sleep. God is about to answer you. Second Corinthians 1. Let us read verse 8 to 9. Paul gave us the answer in, in regards to our trying time. We do not want you to be un, uninformed. Yes. Brothers and sisters. Uh -huh. About the troubles we experienced in the, in the province of Asia. Yes. This is Paul talking about the, the troubles that he experienced. Uh -huh. We were under great pressure. Yes. Far beyond our abilities to endure. Uh -huh. So that we despair of life itself there were so much trouble that they felt this is it they are going to die uh-huh indeed yes we felt we had received the sentence of death they thought they have received how many of us is feeling that way now it's better for god to even some people will even say it how stupid that person is it is better for god to kill me than for me to be experiencing all this i'm telling you if you die somebody else will replace you huh God, I don't even know. With all the things I did for you, when I hear that, my hair cringe. With all the things you do it for who? Your blood that flows, your water, your skin, everything is God. Let him cut one and see how you feel. May that will never happen to us in the name of Jesus. Uh-huh. But this happens that we might not rely on ourselves but on God. But Paul is saying every of those things happen so that we will not rely on ourselves but on God. Let me tell you, many of the things we go through here on heart is so that we will not rely on ourselves but God. Many of us tell on Martin when God gives us one thing, especially we that are filled with a little bit of God's power and spirit. We will get to a level and we feel that God is now, you know, our mate. Yeah. Don't worry. Once I talk to God on your behalf, your case is said to, uh-huh, you are who? It's, it's 
funny the way, but he said there that God humbles us so that we will not believe in ourselves but in God. Many of us believe in our wisdom. I already know what to do. I'll do this, 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 and I'll be able, I be able to make this. That is if God gives you that grace. May God be with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, let's sit down. God bless you. And God bless all of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to quickly explain something to us because we actually have an harvest to attend. Remember this, you only have one source. Any other thing is a resource. Your shepherd praying for you is a resource. Your mother praying for you is a resource. Your friend praying for you is a resource. Somebody giving you money is a resource. Any time that you make the resource your source, every absence or presence of that resource will bring trouble. Am I lying? If you make your father your resource, if your father happens to leave one time in Konyo, there's trouble, there's fire on the mountain. If you make your job your resource, that that is the only thing that you have placed ahead of God. When God takes that job, then what? There's trouble. Look at how many of us has made something, someone, someplace, someplace, something our resource. We will even right now we're thinking if I can leave church and get to this place, everything is settled. God, it, that God, that God has nothing to do with that. If I can just see this person, it is settled. If I can just go to that place, it's settled. If I can just visit this person, it's settled. If I can just call that Baba, it's settled. And then one day we just take the Baba away, and then your settlement ends. When you have a resource and you shift it to the place of God, every absence of that resource, every presence of that resource does not bring joy. May God help us in the name of Jesus. May God help us in the name of Jesus. May God help us in the name of Jesus. And whenever God wants to do something for you, do you know he always asks for something? Whenever you when your provider when god's providence is about to occur in your life he will always request for something when christ met that woman at the well the one that we read today john chapter 4 what did christ ask from her what water, water. and what was what, 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 what did she say you are a jew i'm a samaritan why would you ask water from me we are we are bound enemies is that not what we do sometimes God will minister to you to, to help somebody, speak to somebody, go to somebody. And because you felt this person is white, it's too white for me, it's too black for me, it's too tall for me, it's too short for me. Oh, especially the ladies, they need five figures, somebody with a broad shoulder, six feet tall, minimum, you know, all of that. And then because they are waiting for that, their husband that God has chosen for them will begin to walk before them and they can't see it. They will even walk over that husband and then they will become husbandless. Because whoever they marry is not their husband. And that person will always throw them away. May that never be our case in the name of Jesus. Amen. Christ came to her and said, give me water. And then she began to give all stories, all stories, all kinds of stories. What is God asking you to give? That every time you think of it, you will always find a supplement. And God, I would have bought god i would have bought god i would have bought is that your situation come to church i would have but i have a job is that i want to want to go for administration i would have but you know i've got to do this and then god began to make the woman understand even in fact when i look at the story of that woman i can see why she's troubled married five times all of them dead one two three four five Dead, 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 dead. If it's in the Nigerian culture, we would have given that woman name. We would have called her husband killer. Poco, poco. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Christ even told her, he said, this sixth that you are with is not even your husband. Is somebody listening? 
Hallelujah. What are you even holding now that is not yours? You will call it more, quite some more, papa more. May God help us in the name of Jesus. And so God, when God ministered to her, and she left that same place, do you know that when she left, and then she was coming back, she came back with a lot of soul that she has won. Many of us that are here, when God do anything for us, do we use this, that resource to convert soul for Christ? Or we use that resource to walk over many? You ask for money, God bless me, and God bless you, and then you want, if you cannot make me the chairman of the church, no, I am not going to donate one dollar. I will stand here and make sure things don't go right. That is if God doesn't like the church. Many people that have said that yesterday are nowhere to be found today. May that never become your case in the name of Jesus. Amen. What have you lost that can be compared to that what that woman lost? Every husband, five. And I know at least for you to stay with five husbands, you would have given up. One, two, three, four, five. And she told Christ, he said, give me, when Christ said, I am that water of life. He said, give me that water so that I don't come again to this well. Many of us keep going to a well that cannot satisfy us for satisfaction. Whereby we can reside with Christ and all those troubles can be fixed. You can just reside with your God, that God of providence, instead of going to many well. Do you know how much many people waste? 50,000 today, 100,000 tomorrow, 100,000, 500,000. Eh, they will just keep quoting and quoting. Prophet will be keep posting. Babala will keep, eh, you will keep kill ram, kill ram. It's the same situation every day and every time. You can't get the result that you want. Why can't you just stay with Christ? Because once she discovered that this is the Messiah, all those troubles disappeared. May our trouble disappear today in the name of Jesus. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. What is God asking you to give? Is it the pride? Is it the arrogance? Is it womanizing? Is it manizing? Is it husband snatching? Is it wife snatching? Whatever English. I'm trying to find an English to cover that. What is it? And that takes us to the second Bible reading. Can we open to the second Bible reading? Uh, to the first Bible reading. So we're going from the second to the first. Leviticus this time. Leviticus chapter 23. Then he shall sacrifice one kid of the goats of for a sin uh -huh. offering. And two lambs for the first year for a sacrifice of peace offering. And the priest shall wave them with the bread of first fruits for a wave offering yes. before the Lord with two lambs. Yes. They shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. They shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. Let's hold off. This is just something that I want to throw in here. See, I've had people ask me the question, why is it that every thanks offering that they bring to church, you know, it is the shepherd that wants to eat all the yams, eat all the potato, eat all of this. You can take it to, anytime they do thanks offering, if you want, just tell me, I'll give it to you. I can, I can, you just accept it on behalf of God. The word of God made us, when they wave it, whether it is the sin offering, or whatever kind of offering it is what you are have your bible now can't you read it it is for what okay. and there's a way it is written there it is holy shall be holy to the lord for the priest shall be holy to the lord for the priest so if you are that person that you're always concerned about whatever they bring to church you want to know where they put my clock that I put bring for the church. Where they put my mic that I bring for the church. Where they put my camera that I bring for the church. You know, that money that I dropped 
was it used for the payment of the rent or was it used for giving to the poor i don't want my money to be given to the poor i want it for the rent if you're that kind of person your sacrifice can never be acceptable it is not a cause somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah has there anybody here we have people that are older here that did not begin selling in the first beginning we, even if we have not done this we have heard it have you ever hear anybody go to a babalawo or whatever and they say bring a white cow and after bringing the white cow for sacrifice ask them okay that white cow that we took to the three junction that you slaughtered and left at the three junction are we going to leave it can i have some for pepper soup we don't do that but when it comes to the things of god we want to drag it with god may god help us in the name of jesus i just throw down one day that's not the path that i'm going to but the path that i'm going to is when god your provisions provide for you it is not for you alone many of us get into trouble because everything that god has given to us we keep it for ourselves when god delivers you to, from, from troubles it is so that you can minister to someone that is having the same trouble and so that they can run to your god and get delivered the same way if god gives you a business it is not just for you to employ your father your mother your brothers and sisters it is so that you can have the people the needy come work and get refreshed out of it but how do we do it everything that we get we hold for ourselves for our family and even some people don't even care about their family it's just for themselves there's a question that i would always ask myself whenever i'm feeling that way i'll say that me if you die today are you going to take this to heaven and if the answer is no let it go uh, it's like the song that my children used to sing let it go i told them you better stop singing that song it got into my it, it got so much i don't even know may god help us in the name of jesus Amen. hallelujah, hallelujah. Look at somebody and said, God is my providence. God is my providence. Please keep reading so that we can quickly bring this to a close. 21. Yes. And you shall proclaim on the self day. Yes. That it may be an holy convocation. Yes. Unto you. Yes. You shall do no servile work. Yes. Therein. Yes. It shall be a statue forever in all your dwelling yes. throughout your generation yes you see god wants us to rest can you look at somebody that say god wants you to rest when god blesses you it is so that you can find rest when god deliver you from trouble it is so that you can find rest when god lift you up it is so that you can find rest but you know many of us when god does that we will find trouble and god has blessed you somebody is asking you me give you money you that look like this you that look like that i can never give my money and that one will go around and begin to find solutions to your blessing may god help us in the name of jesus uh-huh and when you reap the harvest of your land now when god this is the part that i want us to listen to when god blesses you when you begin to reap that reap the harvest that you've never worked for See, I'm going to tell you, in this month, by the grace of God, we will all reap great things in the name of Jesus. We will all reap glory in the name of Jesus. We will reap victory over long-term enemy in the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. But when you harvest, uh -huh. thou shall not make clean radiance of the corners of thy field. Please sit down. God bless you in the name of Can somebody read NIV version? That's verse 23. God bless you in the name of Jesus. NIV 23, the version that we read in the church. Verse, now the last verse 22, I believe. When you reap the harvest of the of your land, yes. Do not reap every. Do not reap to the very edge of your field. When you reap, don't reap everything. Don't hoard everything. Don't say I have to ah everything. Each I have to take everything. Mm -mm. Uh huh. Or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Yes leave them for the poor leave something for the poor can you say leave something for the poor leave something for the poor. if you are here and you don't care for people that are less privileged you are not a child of god if all that you care for is yourself alone and you don't care for people that are in need if you don't look at somebody and have favor on them and shower mercy on them and say 
You know, many of us, we get on the street and we see somebody said, let me look at him. Is this truly homeless? I don't think he's homeless. Is he homeless? No, I don't think he's homeless. Is he homeless? I don't, I'm not giving him anything. If you give, it's for you. If you hoard, it's for you. That is the thing. Uh-huh. And the alien. Yes. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord of your God. bless you in the name of Jesus. The same thing was repeated in Deuteronomy 24 verse 19. But I believe it's explained better. Deuteronomy 24 19. I'm about to bring this to a close. Deuteronomy 24 19. Please bear with me. It's the word of God. Deuteronomy 24 19. If and anyone injures his neighbor. With Deuteronomy 24 19. Mm -hmm. When you are harvesting in your fields. A shield, a, a shield. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. That woman is reading from Iwia Wagba. Ori 24 verse 19. All right, go ahead when you are harvesting in your field yes and you overlook a shirt when you are harvesting and you overlook a shirt uh-huh do not go back to get it don't go back to get it leave it for the foreigner leave it for the foreigner the fatherless the fatherless and the poor and the widow uh-huh so that the lord your god may bless you in all the works of your hands so you give so that the lord can bless can somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. if you're that person that says ah uh, Eh? If you're that person that said, I would make sure he suffer. Eh? I know a way out for him. But because of what he has done, I will make sure he suffer. Look at that word. So that the Lord may bless you. That is why you do good. Not that the Lord will no, so that the God will bless you. And I pray that God will bless all of us in the name of Jesus. So what what does God's providence do? I'm going to quickly rush this. God's providence will free you from bitterness. If you're a child of God, God's providence will take you out of bitterness. Read concerning Joseph. Whenever you get to Genesis 45, he said all the things that you have done, that you think you have done, he said you have done it for the good of God. You know, people that try to kill him, turn away that nice good, sold him. He got into prison and finally met Pharaoh and became prime minister. If all those things does not happen in his life, how can he become prime minister? Let me tell you, some of you, God wants to make you so strong that the enemies will not be able to touch you. But for you to become that, he has to make the enemy push you, push you, push you, push you, push you, push you, push you so that you can be redefined, redefined, redefined until you get so powerful that the enemy cannot touch you again. And God will do that for you in the name of Jesus. Another thing that's happening is God's providence will give you a new perspective of your tragedy. If you, God, you give you a new, uh, there's one of my mother that will tell me that whenever she wants to do something and she sees trouble, she will be happy because then she knows that what she wants to do actually is the will of God. If you want to do anything that you know that God is pleased with, you should see somebody accuse you somebody rebuke you somebody say something if everybody is clapping for you you better go check the definition of doing good it might it might be you doing evil may god help us in the name of jesus Amen. and what's that example first king 17 that woman she said let me gather these sticks and cook this little bread and then me and my son eat and then die and somebody told her go and prepare mine first because she sees a new perspective in this. Many of us, we don't see new perspective when God tells us to do something. What I have now is for the rent. Eh? That prophet is telling me to go to, uh, you know, get something big with all that I have and give it to God. This is this prophet all right when I when I only have my rent. The prophet told her, Go and make mine first. Imagine if she had said no, die with your trouble, then she would have died with her own child. May that never become our case in the name of Jesus. God's providence will give you courage in times of a hard time. Any tall or no shitty rare. Could you just see? Ah, oh, ah, oh, 
fire. I'll burn so I'll say Hallelujah. Whoever is It shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us have a seat. I'm about to close this. God's providence will force you to make a choice. God's providence will force you to make a choice. But the choice that you make is your own. I pray that we'll make the right choice in the name of Jesus. And finally, God's providence will let you understand Jesus. I've seen people that they have decreed that will not have a child, have a child. I've seen people that they've declared they will not have a home, have a home. I've seen people that many people, when they were praying, I remember we were going together, this person was praying for the power of the Holy Spirit, especially for the gift of prophecy. Till we turn 25, 27, this man never checked. But now he's one of the best prophets that we have in the Church of Christ. But look at how many years he has planted to be able to reap at 33. God's providence will help you understand Jesus Christ. Because if you don't understand Jesus, you will be understanding Satan. Let me, under let me get that straight. If you don't understand good, you are understanding evil. If you don't understand Christ, you are understanding crisis. May crisis not be a portion in the name of Jesus. So finally, let us open back to that which we start with. Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28. If we are there, shout a wondrous hallelujah. 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 Uh, not all of us is shouting hallelujah. Are we there? Hallelujah. Shout Hallelujah. All right, let's read it again so that we can take this all through the week and we can declare it all through the week that God is our source, everything is in this source, and that God will continue to be our source. Let us go. And, and we, we know, know that, that in all things, God again. works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. I pray that the purpose of God will be fulfilled in your life in the name of Jesus. And in accordance to the word of God that they are sent to us this month, I pray that goodness, mercy, joy, happiness, promotion, glorification, entering into a new realm of blessing shall be our portion all through the month in the name of Jesus. Thank you and God bless you.